In the previous lecture, we have learned some basics about flow nets. In, in this lecture, we're going to learn how to use a flow net to calculate the total head any, at any point, the pore water, the water pressure at any point, or the seepage quantities or seepage loss, and the factor of safety against the heaving. And to illustrate these calculations, I'm going to use one example. That's example two of this chapter. And this slide shows the flow net of example two. So this is a flow net around a row of sheet piles. And you have upstream and downstream water table given. So let's call this upstream water table uh, H1. That's 5.6 meter. And then the downstream water table, we call this H2 of 2.2 meters. And we're going to put the datum, reference datum for total head at the ground surface. And for this flow net, uh, we have the solid lines. Remember, that's the flow lines. That's uh, how water travels along flow lines to from upstream to downstream. All the dashed lines are the equal potential lines. So all points on the equal potential line, on, on, on one equal potential line, have the same potential or same total head. And then uh, the, for each flow channel, we have the ratio of length to width L over B for the flow element in that channel. So for flow channel one and two, they are approximately square elements. So L over B is one. And channel three has rectangular elements. So L over B is not one, it's one over 0.38. And then we have impermeable layer underneath that permeable soil. So that's the setup and the flow net of this problem. And for this example, you're also given the permeability of the soil. So Kx and Kz are equal. So this is isotropic material. And then the saturated unit weight of the soil is also given to you, which you will need to calculate the factor of safety. So then we're going to calculate uh, total head at two points A and B, water pressure at A and B, secret seepage quantity per unit length of sheep house, we call that small q, and then the total seepage quantity beneath the row of sheep house of length L over uh, L of 100 meters, and we call that total seepage quantity capital Q, and finally factor of safety. We'll start with the first one, head at points A and B. And as I mentioned, the data is set at the ground surface. Okay. So to calculate the head at any point in a flow net, okay. so let's use A and B here. Okay. So first, um, again, I'm going to put datum here at the ground surface. So first, before water enters the soil at upstream, the total head for this problem, H1, is 5.6 meters. So that's a height of water level above your ground uh, surface, that's your data. And then as water flows through soil, energy or potential is lost due to friction. And when water reaches point A, the loss of total head actually can be measured using the number of potential drops. Remember, there's a potential, equal potential line parallel to the upstream water surface. So from the ground surface at the upstream to point A, water experiences, experiences one potential drop, delta H. So that means the total head at point A, we call HA, is the initial head H1 at upstream minus the potential drop, delta H. And then for point B, so if you look at point B, when water reaches point B, so let's use this flow line here. So water experience, that's one delta H to the first equal potential line, and then second delta H, and another delta H, third one, fourth one, and the fifth one. So each time water passes one equal potential line, the energy is lost or the potential is lost by delta H. So when water reaches point B, there has been five 
potential drops. So Hb is simply H1 minus 5 times delta H. So again, this 5 here, that's number of potential drops from upstream to point B here. So with this information, then we can calculate the total head HA and HB if we know uh, delta H. For this flow net, we know the total head loss from upstream to downstream, we call capital H, is H1 minus H2, which is 5.6 minus 2.2, so that's 3.4 meters. And then the number of flow channels NF is 3. So we have 1, 2, and 3 flow channels. Then the number of potential drop N sub D here, if you count the number of potential drop, uh, we have, let's, um, let me use a different symbol here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So the number of potential drops is six. And then the small, uh, the, the, the potential drop uh, delta H is simply the total head loss, capital H, divided by number of potential drops ND. And if you plug in numbers, 3.4 meters divided by 6. And this delta H is, oops, is 0.576 meters. Okay, so with this information, with this value of delta H, we can calculate HA and HB. And let me open a blank page here. So this is part one. We want to calculate total head HA and total head HB. And datum is at ground surface. At ground surface. Okay. So for HA is the initial head at upstream H1 minus one potential drop, delta H. If you plug in number, that's 5.6 meters at upstream minus delta H, we just calculated uh, to be 0.576. So that's 5.033 meters at point A. And then for point B, it's HB equals to upstream water um, total head. H1 minus 5 times delta H because water experiences 5 potential drops to reach B from upstream. So that's 5.6 minus 5 times 0.5576 and that gives us 2.765 meters. So that's the total head at point B. Again, you need to uh, specify the datum. So the total head is always with respect to certain reference datum. That is part one to get total head at points A and B. And then for part B, we're going to get, we're going to calculate the water pressure at U, at A, we call UA, and at point B, that's water pressure. And to get the water pressure at point A and point B, we're going to use Bernoulli's equation. So recall Bernoulli's this equation, the total head H is the pressure head HP plus elevation head we call Z. And the pressure head HP is calculated as the pressure at that point divided by the unit weight of water, gamma W plus Z. Okay. So if you use this Bernoulli's equation, then the pressure U is simply, if you move terms around, it is simply unit weight of water gamma W times total head minus elevation head. Okay. So that's the equation we're going to use to calculate uh, pore pressure at a particular point. So in this expression, this is unit weight of water, that's a constant. And H, this is total head. And this total head is something we just calculated from part one using the flow net. 
So flow net gives us the total head at any location. And then this z is elevation. So this is elevation. And this elevation is something you can read directly from a flow net using the scale provided. So let me flip back to the flow net slide. So this, let me use actually this one. So in the flow net, you're given this scale of five meters, and then you can just measure the elevation of point A and point B. So elevation is basically the distance from that point to the reference datum. So remember, ground surface is your datum for this example. But you can set datum at any point. You can use downstream water table to set your datum. Um, so we just happen to uh, select ground surface as our reference data. And then use the scale, you can uh, basically measure this uh, elevation. So for point A, it's 7.08 meter below the ground surface, below your reference data. So ZA is going to be a negative value. And for point B, again, using the scale provided, you can measure it directly from the graph. So this is uh, ZB is, uh, let me put a negative sign here. So ZB is negative five meters. So that's the uh, elevation head. So let's go back to this calculation here. Then for point A and point B, if we use this expression for pro pressure, we can get UA as gamma water times HA minus ZA. And gamma water, if we are using um, SI unit, is 9.81. And then we have HA, something we just calculated from part one, 5.81. 033 and ZA is negative 7 7.08 so it's measured here and if you minus a negative number that changes the sign to positive so 7.08 and this gives us the so pressure at point A uh, is 119 kilonewton per meter square so similarly for uh, Point B, water pressure at point B, we call UB, is gamma water times HB minus ZB, the elevation at point B. That's 9.81. And the total head at point B, 2.765, 2.765. Then minus uh, the elevation head at B, which is negative 5, so that becomes plus 5. And that yields a pore pressure of 76.2 kilonewton per meter square at point B. So that's part one, part two of this example, calculating the total head H and the water pressure U at any given point using the flow net.